Hi everyone, this is Daniel from AI Group of Yan Life Insurance Company of China. Today, I would like to share our work on automatic intensive induction for dialogue systems. Why are we doing automatic intensive induction? For those of you who are not very familiar with dialogue systems, here I show a schematic figure. For example, the user asks, what happens if I make late payment and mortgage? The input can be in a voice format or text format. Either way, it goes to the spoken language understanding module for user intent analyze. A traditional solution for spoken language understanding is called DIS model. We need to do domain classification, intent classification, and slot filling. In this way, we can obtain domain intent and slot and feed them to downstream dialogue manager. In order to obtain the three outputs, we need a full schema including all labels. For example, for the input, what happens if I make late payment on mortgage? The intent is late due loan, and the slot value pair is mortgage and loan. All the other possible labels and the key value pairs need to be predefined. However, those intents and the slots are predefined manually. Most of the time, we need to hire several domain experts to do this work. So here is the question. Say we have 200 millions of queries. How long does it take? How long does it take for a domain expert to manually induce seven intents and a slot and the 16 slots on a certain domain? The answer is surprising but real. 24 hours. Because the expert need to go through the whole data set and pick out the queries within certain domain and summarize those huge numbers of queries. Due to the memory limit of our human, this process may need to go through again and again to make sure the integrity of the intense law in schema. Thus, we propose a new task for automatic intense law induction to accelerate the menu annotation process. We also propose the main independent tool called RECAP to solve this task. RECAP is named from the three components. R is from intern role labeling, C is from concept mining, and P is from pattern mining. We will go through the three steps later and now please see the figure with a comparison between the menu process and our recap. For example, for the same query, what happens if I make late payment on mortgage? For the menu process, we manually label it with this domain banking, intent late to loan, and slot loan in mortgage. To do that, we need to annotate a lot of intents and slots to build up the schema. As for recap, the input is the raw text. We do not need any other annotations. Our recap can automatically decide its intent roles, its patterns, and their concepts. In the end, it again automatically induces the intent loan, late student, info consultant, and the corresponding slot value pair. Note here, we induce a more specific intent with more details. In summary, our recap can first automatically induce intents and slots. Second, these intents have fine-grained details. And of last, we will explain in detail later. It can solve open domain tasks. Now we go ahead and start to explain recap and the corresponding experiments. To do the experiments, we curate large-scale intent slot datasets on finance, e-commerce, and human resource. Here we show a table listing the statistical information of all these three datasets. 
we can see that these data sets include a variety of intents, slots, and even subdomains. In practice, we conduct model training on financial data set, which is Findy, and to, to illustrate the in-domain automatic intents induction task. And we also conduct an experiment on the other two data set to illustrate the out-of-domain task. Here, we illustrate our three-step recap using the LEGO model building process. First, the internal labeling process. We decompose intent, which is similar to the process that we disassemble LEGO model into pieces and roughly sort by color. Second, the concept mining process. We obtain the semantic information of each internal mentions, which is similar to the process that we learn the position and function of each Lego piece. Third, the pattern mining process. We achieve the internal composition guidelines, which is similar to the process that we study the manual book of Lego. At last, we can follow the patterns, pick out the correct concepts, and assemble them onto the right place. And here, we come up with a generative model of intent. Let's explain recap step by step. First, we would like to disassemble the use user utterance. For example, the utterance I want to make a payment to my credit card, but I can't find the page. What should I do? Here, want to make a payment to is a, an action. It defines an action that the, the user plans to take or has taken. Credit card is a slot. It describes the target or the holder of the action or problem. Can't find the page is a problem. It outlines a failure or a situation which is not expected. We introduce a problem here in addition to action is to differentiate a problem-solving intent from the commanding intent. At last, what should I do is a question. It defines a user's intent to elicit information. In summary, we define those four intent rows and the label part of the utterance into one of them. Here we showed intent row labeling results on six utterances. The input is row corpus and the output is label sequence. We use BERT model to solve this sequence labeling task. As we mentioned, the goal is to disassemble and roughly sort by color. At last, we show the performance of IRL. See the label, see the table on the left. We compare, re recap using BERT with two baselines, POS and dependency parser. We show the performance of IRL task on four inter rows as well as the overall performance. Here, recap significantly outperforms the other baselines. See the figure on the right then. It outlines the precision, recall, and F1 of the overall IRL performance on different training data sites. We can conclude that it converges very fast at 2,000 data sites. In other words, to get such an outstanding model, we only need 2,000 annotated samples. Up to now, we can say we achieved our goal and we have disassembled our Lego into pieces and sort them nicely. Now we go ahead to the second concept mining step. We have a lot of internal mentions from the previous internal labeling step. Here, for each internal, we abstract some concepts from it. The specific method we use is phrase embedding together with clustering. See the figure on the left. For each intent, we have several concepts. Each line represents a concept. 
the words or phrases in bracket belong to the concept in front of them. For example, in argument, insurance policy, medical certificate, and ID card are all belong to the concept document. For this step, we do concept mining. We understand the semantic meaning of each mention. In comparison, we learn the function and position of each piece in Lego. You may ask, the concept mining seems to be a difficult task. In order to see the performance, we present a heat map on that. Here, we include three different methods for embedding. Word to vector, phrase to vector, and CNA embedding. As for phrase clustering algorithms, we include labor propagation algorithm, minimal entropy, and k means. We see that it is actually not a very difficult task, and it is reasonable and achievable, since four out of the nine algorithm combinations have satisfactory results. Now we can say we have clearly understand the function of each piece, and we are good to go. The last step, since we have finished this example into pieces and learned the function, we still miss a key part, the instruction. So the last step, we, we utilize internal labeling results and mind the frequent patterns using a prior real algorithm. Most specifically, we have the five different patterns as shown on the left. Up to now, we can say we also obtained the instructions to build our Lego model. Let us summarize the whole process again. We first do internal labeling and disassemble utterances into internal mentions and the corresponding internal labels. We collect internal mentions to the concept mining, and we utilize internal labels, frequent combinations to do pattern mining. We put the mind concept into the right position to of the mind patterns, and we can conclude our intents and slots. Similarly, we have built the Lego model successfully. Then how is the performance? In order to answer the question, we conduct both in-domain and out-of-domain ex ex experiments. We include three baselines, POS, dependency parser, and joint bird. For in-domain task, we see that our recap outperformance, the SOTA, supervised joint bird model. As for out-of-domain task, our recap show very close performance as in domain and the largely out performance at other baselines with 76% improvement of F1 on engine detection and 41% improvement on slot filling. Now let's go back to our first question. Can our recap save time? How long does it take for recap to induce 7 intents and 16 slots on a certain domain? The answer is only 2 hours. And since it is an automatic process, we can even discover some infrequent intents. For this similar task, we can induce 9 more intents. Let's at last summarize our recap. First, we define a new task automatic interstitial induction to save manual annotation process. And we investigate a tool called ERICAP. We curate large-scale interstitial annotated datasets on multiple domains for experiments. And for the experiment results, we find that ERICAP can even effectively tackle the task in new domains. Automatic interstitial induction is only our first step. In the, future, in the future, we plan to work on the development of generalizable dialogue systems. Thanks for your time. Please let us know if you have any further questions. This is Daniel from AI Group of Life Insurance Company. Bye-bye.